Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Balfat. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Royal Decree Number 67 2020, appointing Dr. Nasser Ali Yusuf as Chief Executive Officer of the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority, the BTEA. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, Azana Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, expressed pleasure with the victory of Bahrain McLaren cycling team of the San Daniel Della Freeway race in Italy through cyclist John Trontek. Team member Enrique Botaglin also won third place in the race. His Highness affirmed that this victory reflects the team's advanced capabilities in international races, which aim to promote the kingdom globally. He stated, that the achievements will motivate the team to exert more efforts in the upcoming races. His Highness added that the team is following the plan of its technical and administrative bodies to continue making more achievements under the name of the kingdom. He wished the team further success in future races. Cyclist John Tratnik won first place after delivering an outstanding performance, beating leading cyclists including Australian cyclist Ben O'Connor. The President of the National Audit Authority, Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, participated in the 17th meeting, which was held virtually for the heads of the auditory organizations in the GCC countries. The meeting was headed by Sheikh Ahmed's UAE counterpart and discussed various subjects that have to do with monitoring and reinforcing cooperation across the GCC in this regard. The attendees discussed the training processes that have to do with auditing in the present year, which included programs on investments, application, international standards and monitoring the oil sector. The attendees also discussed a general framework to organize conferences and workshops along with programs that raise awareness of the joint JCC decisions. The attendees then discussed the fifth JCC composition on cooperation on research in the field of monitoring and auditing. They also discussed the Abu Dhabi declaration on increasing the level of cooperation between top level JCC auditing and anti-corruption or organizations. Meanwhile, the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa, participated in the 30th meeting of the Gulf Justice Ministers remotely. The meeting was chaired by the Minister of Justice of the United Arab Emirates, Sultan Saeed Al Badi, with the participation of the GCC Secretary General, Dr. Naif Falah Al Hadraf. The ministers discussed a number of topics listened on, listed on the agenda, including the minutes of the meeting of the Committee of Directors and Heads of Training, Legal and Judicial Council centers and institutes in GCC countries, the development of an agreement to implement verdicts, assignments and judicial declarations in the countries of the GCC and the extraction of legislative principles contained within the laws, regulations and the unified draft law system to combat extremism, racism, hatred and discrimination in addition to other issues of common interest between the ministries. Arab Shipbuilding and Repair Yard S3 signed a joint venture agreement with Woodlands Holdings to provide services related to the oil and gas industry in Bahrain. The company will provide a turnkey productive solutions, the aim to maximize recovery from marginal assets as well as accelerate production from unconventional resources. The agreement was signed in the presence of the Minister of Oil and Chairman of S3, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and by the Managing Director of Asri Mazin Matar as well as the CEO of Woodserve Sam Kawa. The minister welcomed the signing of the agreement that will contribute to providing solutions and services to Bahrain to enhance the competitiveness of the oil and gas extraction process, attracting investments and contributing to the kingdom's economic growth and achieving its vision for 2030. Sheikh Mohammed stressed that the National Oil and Gas Authority, Noga, and its subsidiaries are working under the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, who is keen on the development of the oil and gas sector through the expansion of the use of the latest modern systems in exploration and production. He praised the close cooperation between Bahrain and the U.S. and the oil and gas sector that are steadily developing through the U.S. oil companies in supporting the kingdom's efforts in all specialized areas of the vital oil sector and in light of the long experience of these companies and their advancement of modern technology 
technological systems. The joint venture between Asri and Woodserve will achieve further gains for the oil and gas sector in Bahrain. The new joint venture combines Asri's local capabilities and facilities with Woodserve's leading expertise in bringing U.S. technology and optimization solutions to Bahrain to create a local center of excellence. It is a part of the initiative to increase collaboration with the oil and gas sector in the United States. Uh, Woodserve, uh, of course, is a company that brings expertise in fabrication of equipment and assets used in the oil and gas sector. And uh, with this initiative, we look to uh, localize a lot of the content that is consumed in Bahrain's upstream sector and hopefully even uh, open up opportunities for employment uh, for young Bahrainis in the very near future. We very much appreciate uh, the initiatives and we thank, uh, of course, the U.S. Embassy uh, and uh, the American Chamber of Commerce for their support and uh, congratulate Esri and Woodserve uh, for this uh, amazing achievement. Uh, yeah, this jo joint venture between Woodserve and Esri has been in the making for the last uh, six months. This is basically to add uh, to Bahrain uh, competitive advantage in serving the oil and gas uh, industry uh, through providing uh, different uh, facilities and equipment utilizing uh, ASRI's assets uh, and capabilities uh, hands in hands with what would serve bring uh, from the U.S. and technologies, know-how, equipment and facilities. And this is going to serve immediately uh, the advancement of the oil and gas uh, sector here in Bahrain, including Bahrain Field. Uh, it's also going to uh, add an advantage to developing Bahrainis, uh, men and women, especially young engineers, uh, and qualify them to serve the oil and gas sector. We're very excited about uh, signing this joint venture with uh, ASRI and uh, Noga Holdings. Uh, this uh, uh, basically makes a platform for us in the region, a very strong platform for delivering our services to uh, not just to Bahrain, but uh, the rest of the GCC region. So this is an investment for us. Uh, we're excited about bringing new technologies from the US um, and hosting them here from Bahrain. So we're, we're partnering with a number of other U.S. companies to uh, basically bring the technology in and investment as well. We all are also excited about uh, the use of uh, graduate engineers from the University of Bahrain, which we've been doing for the last five years. Our uh, Bahraini engineers are now working in Adnok, Abu Dhabi, and have previously worked in Saudi Aramco. So uh, we found the uh, engineers and resources, girls and boys, to be a fantastic resource for us and really have added value to the services that we, we offer in the region. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, participated in the virtual annual meeting held by the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, with the participation of finance ministers, governors of national banks and chairmen of monetary institutions in the Middle East and North African region, as well as Afghanistan and Pakistan. The minister affirmed that Bahrain has made the safety and health of its citizens and residents a top priority by curbing the spread of the coronavirus. He added that the kingdom has been keen on facing all the pandemic's repercussions to achieve balance between maintaining the health of the community and supporting the national economy. He highlighted the precautionary and preventive measures adopted to control the spread and repercussions of the virus. He continued by saying that the Kingdom has adopted a strategy of tracing, testing and treating which aims to promptly discover cases and treat them, affirming that efforts are continually exerted to launch various initiatives that aim to benefit the Kingdom and its people. The minister said that the kingdom has worked on protecting individuals and companies alike to alleviate the economic repercussions of the virus, which was achieved through the launch of a financial and economic stimulus package that comprised of over 20 initiatives at a cost of 4.5 billion Bahraini dinars, which is equivalent to 31% of the GDP. The package included several initiatives, the most prominent of which is paying the salaries of Bahraini employees working in the field 
fields most affected by the virus and the private sector during the first three months of the virus's spread, followed by a subsidy of up to 50% of their salaries until the end of the current year. Several other financial measures were adopted aimed at protecting jobs, ensuring the stability of the labor market, and providing the necessary liquidity for the private sector and all economic sectors. The government also paid the electricity and water bills for all subscribers, including individuals and companies. It also raised the lending capacity of banks to provide the necessary flexibility to postpone installments or additional financing for customers. The minister affirmed the importance of international cooperation to overcome the effects of the pandemic and to achieve the goals of sustainable development. He added that among the ways to deal with the effects of the pandemic is diversifying the sources of income away from oil and the construction of infrastructure, along with increasing the efficiency of the use of resources, including renewable energy. The minister said that the pandemic has affirmed the importance of using technology to enable the ongoing functioning of education and employment, which he said Bahrain has succeeded in doing. Following the conclusion of the third regular session of the Representatives Council during the fifth legislative term's third session, which was held remotely, the chairman of the five standing committees and their deputies were elected in the Council of Representatives. The following MPs were elected to hold the following positions. Father Sawad as chairman of the Legislative and Legal Affairs and Basim al-Malki as deputy chairman by acclamation. Mahmoud al-Bahrani as a head of the Financial and Economic Affairs and Ali Ishaq as deputy chairman by acclamation. Mohamed Assisi al as chairman of the Foreign Affairs Defense and National Security by acclamation and Isa Dosri as deputy chairman by acclamation. Ahmed Lansari as chairman of the Services Committee and Sousan Kamal as deputy chairwoman by acclamation. And Mohamed Bouhamoud as chairman of the Public Utilities and Environment Committee by acclamation and Abdurrazzaq al Hattab as deputy chairman by acclamation. Meanwhile, a press conference was held today by the National Task Force for the Combating of the Coronavirus, which was held at the Crown Prince Centre for Training and Medical Research. The team expressed appreciation for the initiative of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, to launch the Khalifa bin Salman Award for the Bahraini Doctor, which the team said affirms of His Royal Highness's commitment to supporting the Kingdom's medical care and the further development of the health system. The team congratulated the winners of the award and said that it will incentivize further development and innovation. The Under Secretary of the Ministry of Health and member of the task force, Dr. Walid Al Mana, expressed appreciation for the praise of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa for the medical care for their efforts in maintaining public health and containing the pandemic. Dr. Al Mana then said that 6,885 cases of coronavirus have been recorded since the 17th of September, which represents a record, but the number has since been reduced to 3,773 on the 14th of October. He emphasized the importance of observing health precautions and said that a number of new measures are being implemented, including the reopening of cafes and restaurants as of the 21st of October, as long as the total number of the people in a given establishment does not exceed 30. Partial return of schooling for elementary and kindergarten levels will also begin with the 25th of October with the consent of their parents. Dr. Almana also added that a new service has been launched to rapidly screen coronavirus cases, of which 20,000 tests have been conducted and which will be carried out for school students. Almana noted that among the regulations and instructions given to schools are notifying the health authorities concerned, communicating with guardians, designating specific isolation locations, identifying contacts and determining class capacity while maintaining a distance of at least 1.5 meters between desks, in addition to several other provisionary measures. He reiterated that the safety of students is a top priority. For his part, infectious diseases consultant and microbiologist at the BDF Hospital and member of the National Task Force for Combating Coronavirus, Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Manaf al Gahtani, expressed thanks and appreciation to all citizens and residents who committed to the regulations and precautionary measures, which helped lower the percentage of active cases by 45% in the last four weeks. He called on every individual to continue to commit to the safety precautionary measures 
issued by the National Task Force to help curb the spread of the virus. He added that the kingdom has started using convulsant plasma since the beginning of the pandemic as a protocol for treating active coronavirus cases who are exhibiting severe symptoms or are under intensive care. He emphasized that recovered individuals can play a vital role in saving lives by donating blood plasma, stressed that donating blood plasma does not in any way reduce personal immunity against the virus. For her part, consultant of infections and internal diseases at Salmani Medical Complex, Dr. Jamila Salman, affirmed that the safety of health of every individual is a top priority that cannot be compromised, stressing the importance of continuing efforts by adhering to all the precautionary measures issued by the authorities concerned. As Salman said that negligence is committing in to precautionary measures not only increases the number of active cases, but also the pressure on the medical team and jeopardizes the community's safety. She reiterated the importance of avoiding gatherings and committing to social distancing rules. Dr. Salman said that the ministry continues to increase the number of daily tests and the scope of random testing, noting that the number of tests conducted so far in the kingdom exceeds 1,638,000 tests. The winners of the Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa for the Bahraini doctor expressed thanks and appreciation for His Royal Highness Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa following His Royal Highness's message to them of congratulations, which affirms His Royal Highness's keen interest on research and development and offering the best possible medical service to citizens and residents. The winners affirmed that the prize had provided them with a great opportunity to compete in giving more to Bahrain and that it represents an incentive to further develop it and the health system. They closed by saying that the prize represents a badge of honor for all Bahrain's distinguished doctors. The Ministry of Health has said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 3,137 with 406 recoveries, 306, 309 registered new cases and three deaths. 84 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 217 are contacts of active cases and eight are travel-related. The deceased were two 70 and 78-year-old female citizens and an 87-year-old female expatriate. The Ministry expressed its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to adhere to the rules and avoid public spaces when possible.